Now, another huge negative from the series in Atlanta has definitely been the continuation of inconsistency from one of the Mets' aces in Justin Verlander. In his first seven starts as a Met, Verlander has posted a, a 4.85 earned run average, a 4.91 fielding independent pitching, striking out just 19.9% of batters, and a career worst 1.6 home runs per nine in 39 innings pitched. When asked about his start to the season this week, Mets manager Buck Showalter said that Justin is chasing perfection, and I say it all the time. He looks at things not only analytically, but any possible reason why he fails. Verlander has yet to pitch back-to-back -back quality outings as a Met, as the 40-year-old 2022 Cy Young Award winner is slated to make his next start on Wednesday against the Yankees at Citi Field. We're seven starts in to Justin Verlander's career with the Mets. Is it time to hit the panic button? Uh, definitely. I think it is. It, it never, it always was time to panic. I mean, when you already have one 40 year old and then you double down, get another 40 year old, uh, a guy who started the year on the injured list that already was the panic button in and of itself. And then the biggest thing that you said, the fact that he doesn't have back to back good starts. I mean, we're talking about a guy who last year won the Cy Young ERA under two. Did he have like any bad starts last year? Meanwhile, this season, it's like every other start's a bad one. So, I mean, it's typical. Guy is an amazing player, comes to mess all of a sudden, he sucks. We've seen that countless times every year. So we, we have that going on, but it's just like you pay him this much money because he's the one guy, him and Max are supposed to be the two guys that you trust every five days is going to give you quality starts and they're going to work pretty deep into games. Uh, and not give up a lot of runs. This way you're in the game. You have a chance to win. When you pay them that kind of money, you should be in every single start that they make. That Every one of those games should be winnable. And it's not. When he's walking the ballpark and giving up this many hits and this many runs, and he only gives you three innings, that's not going to get it done. I mean, we were so quick to run Jake and run Bassett out of town when they struggled against Atlanta. And we're like, oh, we got Verlander now. But if he's doing the same thing, I mean, what are we really doing here? I mean, we're, we're going to have the same results. We're going to have the same outcome if this is what's going to be happening in these head-to-head -head matchups against the Braves. So uh, what concerns me is, like I always say, when you sign these older guys, it's only going to get worse. He's not going to get better. I, I mean, this is where we're at right now, and that's if he stays on the field. That's if he stays healthy. But come next season or maybe the year after that, he's going to be even worse. So, I, I mean, it's just – this is the risk you took when you signed a guy at this age. You knew his best years were behind him. You knew he wasn't going to win the Cy Young again. So when you have these inconsistent starts, it's a big problem because you can't be like, oh, well, no. let's say by some miracle, the Mets turn it around. They make the playoffs, right? And they're actually in some playoff series. What happens during a seven-game series and Verlander has one good start, one bad start? You you can't rely on that. And he's had, he had some bad starts in the postseason last year, no question. But I just think that – on that team, on Houston, you had a bunch of good starters, so you can get away with it. But on this team, he needs to be getting it done every single time because we don't have the other guys that can step in. We don't have the Framber Valdez and Christian Javier and these young guys that can fill in and pick up the slack. So it's definitely a big problem right now, no question. Yeah, I mean, I expected much better results than what we have gotten so far. It's been very disappointing. But this is kind of what comes with paying – him, Scherzer, $43 million a year, $45 million a year. Now, I can't blame Steve Cohen because at the end of the day, look at the Mets' depth as far as their farm. They don't have any pitchers that are ready to come up and step into the role. So, yeah, I appreciate the idea of paying historical Hall of Fame pitchers short-term for the next two to three years because – we don't have anything to supplant it right now. But at the end of the day, yeah, Verlander is not living up to it. Scherzer's not living up to it. And uh, it's put us into crisis mode. Sanga only pitches once every eight days. You know, he needs his six, seven days of rest. So it's it's been uh, trial by tribulation, unfortunately, for this team. And you hoped it would work out, but... You see a Mets logo, you put a Mets uniform on, you always seem to go to shit. Bro, you can change the helmet, change the uniform, change the stadium, but the results <laughs> are oh, Joe Benigno, yeah, <laughs> you'll be. You can change the uniform, you can change the colors, 
No matter what you put on, you're done. It's over. The best starts that he's having are dominant. He's dominating. Eight scoreless innings, seven scoreless innings, and then he's like either really, really good or really, really bad. Am I surprised? Am I surprised that it's this bad? Maybe. Am I surprised that he's having trouble finding that consistency? No, I really am not because he's 40. That's it. That's all I got to say. He's 40. They sacrificed so much starting pitching depth, gave $43 million to a 40-year-old, gave $43 million as well to a 38-year-old to be the stellar guys of this rotation. And listen, I was wrong about DeGrom. Definitely was wrong about DeGrom. I 100% up, own up to that. There were other starters out there that you could have just signed, made a surplus of good pitchers. I mean, there was guys out there that they could have got, and then you wait for that unicorn of a player the next year. You could have done that. But no, they gave it to Justin Verlander. And I talked about this on stream a few days ago after their main goal with Justin Verlander was to replace Jacob DeGrom. That was their main that was their main focus. They wanted to replace Jacob DeGrom. The problem is what Jacob DeGrom did as a Met, it's not replaceable. You're not replacing him. You're not replacing the dominance of Jacob DeGrom. And they paid a guy to be as dominant as Jacob DeGrom. And I'm not saying that he wasn't dominant last year, but to see that he's actually going to to think that he's actually going to repeat that, it wasn't going to happen. And I'm not surprised that he's just falling off like this because he's 40. I mean, age matters. And the fact that they made this rotation even older, it pisses me off. The fact that they didn't sign multiple arms instead of bringing in Justin Verlander. Obviously, I like the Senga move. I love Senga. The fact that they didn't even consider like bringing back Bassett, who... Whether you have a sour taste in your mouth or not from the playoffs in those last two games he pitched, he gave you length. We're not getting any length. The fact that they didn't trade Carrasco for other starters that they could have got that have kind of flopped at the major league level, young guys with upside, how they've approached this starting rotation, it pisses me off. The fact that they're bottom 10 in pretty much every category in starting pitching, and it starts with Verlana, goes all the way to the bottom, combined this entire rotation, one of them's hurt, $130 million this year. And that's coming out of the biggest payroll in baseball. So a big chunk of that is your starting pitching. The fact that it's underperforming like this, and it starts with Verlander, it goes to Scherzer, it's a problem. It's definitely a problem. The fact that you don't have any depth for it makes it even scarier.